what I'm trying to do in my work is to always bring elements of, of the reality, of course. So, so, for example, we always know more or less where it is, if it's on a beach or if we have like a, a tree, a cave, or um, we can recognize elements. But at the same time, I also keep the part of ambiguity. So I'm trying for the, the observer to really question what he's looking at. Also another thing that I'm trying to do is to always leave bits of the construction. So I never try to hide the construction. It's always there for you to really verify that it's not a Photoshop montage, for example, but it has been really made in situ. So in my images, I'm interested in the trompe the effect that when you place an image, uh, a 2D image, within a 3D space, but at the end when you take a photograph, it becomes a, a 2D again. So a 2D in a 2D works, which is always quite interesting to me because when I play sometimes a backdrop, it doesn't look like anything. But then suddenly when I place my camera in the right angle and I re-photograph it, then it works. What really interested me is how I can place a material in a space and, um, and change the perspective of a space. So for example, if I take a picture of a forest that is pretty basic in a way, like just a plain piece of a forest. And then suddenly if I put a, just a plastic sheet hanging, there is a completely different perspective because it looks like the, maybe the water is falling and then it's, uh, it looks like it's a riverbed. If I just put something, one thing, quite simple material, at the end of the day it's not a huge scenography, it's just one material, how can I change the landscape with just one thing? With Les Amants, I started to go outside and to do all my installations outside and I, I used artificial materials, uh, so fabric and cardboard, uh, that I placed in the nature and I was very much interested in this confrontation um, between the man-made and the organic. I guess the, first, the most important one of the series Les Amants was a waterfall made of plastic sheets. There were different ways of looking at it and, uh, and obviously because it looked like a waterfall. So the second series, Haven Her Body Was, I realized that I was very, very much interested in remote and isolated spaces. Those spaces that exist in a, in a real geography, uh, but at the same time they also exist in uh, human imagination and the common consciousness of what is a cave, for example, or was it, what is an island. If we think of, a, you know, like for example, a tropical space or a space that is, it's there, we know it's there, but at the same time we put a lot of our stories and myths and legends into those spaces. Those spaces are there, but they live in a parallel almost to our, our world. I was very much interested in the, all the, the edifices and the structures that were in relation with nature and in, in direct relation to nature, which we can call the geomorphic architecture, an architecture that either is built within the nature completely or to observe nature. And for example, uh, some observatories uh, were considered as geomorphic architectures. And I became quite interested in some observatories of uh, India, so the, the, what we call the cosmic architectures. So the most famous is the Jantamantar observatories in uh, Jaipur, and this, those buildings, that edifices that were built to have this kind of direct relation to the sky, almost to build on Earth uh, a sort of bridge between the, the sky and the, and the Earth. And what really interested me in, in those buildings was the, mainly the, the stairs going towards the sky. It was kind of this sort of idea of, of walking towards the sky, kind of really having this, you know, this trajectory. I traveled a lot to France in England and uh, Germany and I photographed uh, fragments of buildings and then I printed them on pieces of paper and then I mounted them on a cardboard. So they were about 1 meter 50 high and then I was uh, holding them in a landscape. The buildings are totally flat, they are like facades and they, don't, um, they, don't, they are not in volume at all and the shadows on the, the buildings were because I just photographed them with this type of light. And the shadow on the floor is just is very flat, is the shadow of just this flat cardboard and the shadow of the person holding it at the back. What I wanted to do with the observatoires is, is to have a, 
typology of, of those edifices. And therefore, in order to accentuate that, I decided to use the black and white to sort of enter the, almost the field of the archival uh, prints. I think it's quite uh, uh, offering spaces in which people can really recognize what they have to recognize in a way, but to leave it as open as possible. So it's not about a particular religion or a particular cultural point. It's not even a, about really environment. People would see the fragility of the nature in the photograph and would, you know, question the landscape. But it's not uh, necessarily about that. I think it's, it's about many different things. It's about what we want it to be in a way. Satellite stations is about uh, how we observe the sky and the relationship we kind of cultivate with the sky. What I was fascinated about is those stories before the invention of the telescope. So before we could actually see the sky with a, a closer look, but how people used to look at the sky with their bare eyes and um, identify it, measure it, and then uh, all the stories and the myths that um, were you know, uh, taught at that moment. And also, I kind of, because of, of course I'm questioning uh, the space we're living in and, and, uh, on Earth, but then at the time it was always somehow related to how we looked at the sky. So one of the stories that uh, particularly interested me to build this series was the, all the stories about the celestial vault. The, the fact that the world in the, middle, the antiquity and the Middle Ages, the universe was considered as closed, um, like if there, were, if there was a, a wall, um, a fixed wall that was kind of in which we were sort of uh, evolving. And this idea of infinity arrived. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the Renaissance and this kind of, yeah, this kind of wall that you can almost perhaps touch and where the universe stopped, quite reassuring in a way. Some of the spheres look very three-dimensional and we played with the light to make it look more three-dimensional, but they are actually just discs, so completely flat. So now I'm working on a series which I call Les Mécaniques and it's about the movement of the landscape, so how the landscape is uh, sort of shown as a, a moving um, entity. This came from the series Southern Light Stations. I started to work with materials that were in movement. So I worked, for example, with uh, water-soluble paper, so when I put water on it, it dissolved completely and then I photographed that while it was dissolving. So I became more and more, and more interested in photographing things that were moving, which I've never done before because all the other, the previous installations were very much um, static. So the, the, the mechanic, Le Mechanic, is about showing the, the transition and the movement of this landscape. So for example, the, the first series that I'm working on, it's actually a, a triptych where um, I want to go in a, in a jungle, so I have a, a shoot plan in Thailand, in a very, like a primary jungle, where the idea is to have a very, very large mirror, and I will have a, a structure with only a few mirrors, and then I will, I will add some mirrors so that it will look like a, a square. And, and the idea is to really uh, question this kind of destruction of the, of the jungle and the way the jungle is you know, evolving and moving all the time, or the human impact onto this kind of forest. I, I never want to show something that is really obvious, or I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm more interested in, in building installation that, uh, that are more ambiguous. It was really um, uh, a pleasure uh, this year to talk with uh, Christophe Weiners and Florence Bourgeois about, the, um, about this project in Paris Photo. And I really enjoyed uh, talking to them about the way they, they, um, they want the fair to really show as much um, different type of photography as possible. And how photography can be also very much linked to, uh, to dance, for example, or choreography, or sculpture, or painting. And uh, it's not about putting things in one box, photography in one box, but to showing it, uh, you know, in relation to other type of uh, forms of art. I'm very, very much looking forward to have the, the, this triptych in the fair. It's a very brilliant fair because it's so big and it attracts so many people. And of course the quality is great, so 
it's a moment of gathering also. So it's galleries, but it's also curators, it's a lot of different artists. So to me it's an important moment because we kind of all gathered in, in Paris during this you know, important moment. So even people from, uh, I don't know, Ireland and uh, the UK come and then we, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good, I think it's, it's, that's the good thing about a fair to me.